Canada and Origin Pet Food. Made in Canada, quality never outsourced. And today, it's all about the Italian Greyhound. I'm here with a couple of good friends. We've got Eileen Abe and we've got Rue with his uh, Italian Greyhound. Tell us a little bit about Rue, Eileen. Well, Rue is four years old and um, she's a little bit bigger than uh, most Italian Greyhounds. Uh, I understand they're like eight to 10 pounds. That's typically. the average? Yeah. And Rue's 19 pounds. Pick her up. Let's see how big she is. I thought I was going to be able to carry her around with me, but as you can see, she's pretty much of a handful. <laughs> <laughs> Boundless energy, you know, if, if I bring her out in the morning and into the yard, she just keeps running and running. Lots of energy. Lots of energy. And I understand she gets a little naughty in the morning sometimes. Yeah, she's learned that, you know, if she pulls the dish towel with my coffee cup towards her on the counter, the coffee cup will fall over and then she gets to drink all of my coffee. <laughs> oh. Caffeine is probably the last thing an Italian Greyhound needs. They seem to have boundless energy and can play fetch as long as you can last. Italian Greyhounds, often called Iggies, are not used for racing like their larger cousin, the Greyhound, but they can achieve speeds of up to 25 miles an hour. They're best to have access to a closed-in yard like Eileen's so they can run freely. But when they're out for a walk, they should always be leashed. Because they're considered a sight hound, if unleashed, they might take off after anything they see moving. And thinking about training for Italian Greyhounds, Eileen, how easy is it to train an Italian Greyhound? Well, generally as a breed, I understand they're, they're challenging to train because they have minds of their own. Um, Rue in particular went to serious puppy training with Wendy Ma, and we found that she had some additional challenges because she's hard of hearing. Is that common with the breed? Um, no, it's not, um, but it was with her, so she's learned how to respond to hand signals. What is typical, though, is that they have really thin legs, and so as much as they like to run and jump and leap over things, you know, they can often break their legs, and Rue has done that, and she has a metal split here on this leg. Anyone thinking about getting an Italian Greyhound is urged to inquire with the breeder if the parents were tested for a variety of disorders. In addition to those fragile leg bones, Iggy's can also suffer from slip kneecaps and degeneration of the hip. They're susceptible to periodontal disease and their teeth should be brushed daily. And they can also develop some thyroid problems. Italian Greyhounds are not particularly good with young kids because rough play can threaten their fragile bones, but they're great with older children and older adults because they make great companions. Grooming is easy and Iggy's are practically odorless and they shed a medium amount of hair. If you're thinking about getting an Italian Greyhound, let's ask Eileen about her considerations. Well, I got Rue because when I saw her as a puppy, she was so cute, you know. Um, if you're planning to get an Italian Greyhound, know what you're getting into. It's a lot of high maintenance, and they live for quite some time, so it's like 15 years of having a companion for life. And that's all about the breed, and now you know all about the Italian Greyhound. I'm Malin Moore. All about the breed is brought to